Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at Robert DiBernardo, also known as DB among the Gambino family. According to some, DiBernardo was the driving force behind the US adult market during his time. Whatever the case, he was a reasonably competent businessman with no personal violent past, but his connections to the mafia scared off rivals and other criminals instead. In the Gambino family, he was known as the mastermind behind New York City pornographic rackets. Through Ettore Zappi, a fellow pornographer and Gambino captain, Di Bernardo became acquainted with the Cosa Nostra. Di Bernardo was purportedly sponsored by Zappi to become a member of the Gambino family. At one point, Di Bernardo was in charge of a chain of Times Square bookstores that specialized in selling pornographic novels at a huge markup. These movies were watched in peep show booths and were imported, mostly from the Netherlands or Denmark. He had made the family millions of dollars in the trade. He kept that aspect of his life a closely guarded secret from his Long Island suburban neighbors. All the neighbors knew about him was that he was a Manhattan-based real estate mogul who could afford a large ranch house and a white Mercedes. Di Bernardo appeared to have a strong commitment to his family and was a kind guy who coached small league baseball for a while. Di Bernardo was the largest child pornographer in the United States. Thus, it was ironic that this normal suburban father would be involved in any way with anything related to children. He has made it his goal to give the Gambino family control over that profitable trade. When an FBI sting operation targeted the pornographic trade in the early 1980s, Di Bernardo was caught in the crosshairs. After being found guilty, he avoided going to jail for a considerable amount of time. But when those appeals eventually expired, he was given a five-year prison sentence. Moreover, his involvement in the child pornography scheme became the subject of yet another federal inquiry. This decision was based on the belief that FBI agent Patrick Livingston, who bought purportedly pornographic movies and videotapes from KED Productions while posing as an adult products dealer in Miami, may have lied to the grand jury. Livingston's arrest for theft in November 1981, and evidence of mental health problems impairing his capacity to discern between his true and undercover identities cast doubt on his credibility. Despite facing legal challenges, Di Bernardo played a crucial role in bolstering the Gambino family's finances. His primary responsibility involved overseeing the substantial profits generated through the bid-rigging scheme in the concrete business. Gotti, recognizing Di Bernardo's financial prowess, elevated him to the position of captain soon after taking charge of the family. However, Gotti soon came to regret this decision as it became apparent that Di Bernardo led a triple life, presenting an unexpected challenge. In addition to his involvement in the bid-rigging scheme, Di Bernardo maintained a dual identity as a real estate tycoon, diverting funds from the Gambino family's illicit activities to finance his own property ventures. Over a span of just a few years, he misappropriated over $4 million from the family profits. Compounding the issue, there were allegations that Di Bernardo sought to secure a reduced prison sentence through negotiations with the FBI. Adding further complexity, he engaged in secret meetings with members of other criminal families, intensifying the already precarious situation. The days of Di Bernardo are coming to an end. According to investigators, the Westies, a group from Manhattan's West Side, were tapped for the job. In June 1986, Di Bernardo mysteriously disappeared, leaving behind only his white Mercedes. With Gotti in a new position, the details of contract killings were given to Angelo Ruggiero. However, what might seem an easy job in the Mafia becomes a hard task for Gotti's new captain. Ruggiero's emotional impulses occasionally clouded his judgment. Despite this, he successfully orchestrated Di Bernardo's disappearance. Another story later came out. According to informant Sammy Gravano, Angelo Ruggiero, the only Mafia member permitted to visit John Gotti in jail, relayed Gotti's desire to have Di Bernardo eliminated for being disrespectful. Gravano was hesitant about taking the order. Di Bernardo didn't have a crew of killers like Gotti did. Gravano didn't see Di Bernardo as a threat to Gotti's leadership, but Gravano understood that Ruggiero was a Gotti's loyalist. To avoid bumping heads, Gravano decided to follow the boss's command. According to Gravano on June 5, 1986, Di Bernardo was lured to Gravano's drywall company offices in Brooklyn under the pretense of a regular business meeting. Gravano instructed Joseph Peruta, a Gambino soldier, to get Di Bernardo coffee. Instead, Peruta retrieved a silenced 380 from a cabinet and shot Di Bernardo in the back of the head. Unbeknownst to Di Bernardo, his pornography business interests had become less profitable. Gravano, taking advantage of the situation, seized control of Teamsters Local 282, aligning with his construction racket. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more character breakdowns and analysis of your favorite gangsters. See you in the next one.